Mike's Daily Podcast. It is a pleasure to be with you once again here at Mike's Daily Podcast Land, or is this called Cafe anyway? That's right. Mike's Daily Podcast. Welcome to Cafe Anyway. I'm Mike Matthews. I am the host of this podcast. I've been doing it for so long, I feel like an outcast. That's because when people listen to this podcast, they go, Why does that guy sing at the beginning? It makes no sense. Well, then I stop singing and they go, Okay, it's Mike's Daily Podcast. So it makes perfect sense. Listen, I want to tell you thank you for listening to the show today. And Mike's I was in Daily Rockridge today. Podcast. I had a... Yeah. I had a couple of vittles. I had a couple of things to eat. And they, let's just say, it's not cheap. Even if you're grabbing a sandwich, it's not cheap. And then I had to grab some fish and chips because I got a little fish market in Rock Ridge. And that's not cheap. And I haven't had fish and chips in so long. I've been watching so many British TV shows. And they always get, oh, let's get some fish and chips. And I'm like, oh, chips. Like like potato chips. No, we call them crisps. Chips are what you Americans call French fries. Or Germans call palm frites. So they like to call them chips and they eat them. And I, I watch it all the time. We just finished watching Queens of Murder. A British TV show that kind of is a little bit like Pushing Daisies. If you are familiar. Pushing Daisies. It was a pretty good show. Very odd. It had the premise of a guy who was able to bring someone back to life for a minute. And if he did, by touching them, and if he didn't touch them again, as soon as a minute was over, somebody in the room would die. So he had to watch out about that. That was the premise of that show. Kristen Chenoweth was on that. And here's today's and I watched many an episode, the podcast pictures of my lovely lady friend and I from a year ago at Fairmont Ridge. Let's just say a year ago, things were about to get very, very weird and become very, very difficult in my life. I have talked about this many times in February on Valentine's Day of last year. My mom passed away very suddenly without warning. Uh, so, wow. And... Everything can change on a dime in your life. And you just have to roll with it and do the best that you can. The late great Basil the Boxer right there. Yes. He went to Fairmont Ridge with me many, many times. We had many a wonderful walk. Oh, Rock Ridge, by the way, in Oakland. So many cool dogs. Everybody's walking a cool dog of some sort. Oh, it was awesome. And I ate at a place, a sandwich place... Where they they name all their sandwiches after people. One of them's called a Robin Williams, and just the all, the best. But I'm not gonna name them because I had to pay. <laughs> if I didn't have to pay, hey, plugs plugs galore. But no. By the way, if you would like to call the show, there is a new number. And I've got it so at my website, mikesdailypodcast.com, all you got to do is click on, when you see the phone number, you just touch it with your phone, with your finger touching your screen, and it will open up in your phone, and you can call me and leave a message, because you'll be calling Cafe anyway. 510-228-4640, 510-228-4640. Today, we are going to bring you Let's go back with Matthews, and we're going to go back to a very interesting time. In 2002, May 19th of 2002, do you know what happened? Do you remember? Do you know? May 19th? Hmm. Did someone get married, Mike? Did you get married? No. No, that was later. That was about uh, two years later, actually. And then that didn't last. So, no. That was long before I met... My lovely lady friend now But yes May 19th Was when the X-Files Had their last episode On Fox Now since then They've done a couple movies 
I think I saw one of them. I didn't see the last one. But yes, the program spanned nine seasons with 202 episodes. And today we are at, with Mike's Daily Podcast, FF episode 2550. 2550. 2550. So we'll go back to May 19th for an interesting moment. But first, what's happening now? What's going on now? In this particular time frame of which you and I are living. Well, California has introduced a wealth tax. Forcing people to pay years after they leave California. I left California for a while. Actually, in 2007, I was out of California for two years. I lived in Alabama. Went from one extreme to the other and really enjoyed it. But according to Fox News, California lawmakers are pushing legislation that would impose a new tax on the state's wealthiest residents, even if they've already moved to another part of the country. Assemblyman Alex Lee, no, that's not what happens when two members of Rush have a baby. Getty Lee and Alex Lifeson do not produce Alex Lee, unfortunately. Huh? What? That made no sense. Getty Lee and Alex Lifeson, the surviving members of Rush. Two amazing musicians, of course, and Neil Peart, as I have been told I have to pronounce his last name now. But Alex Lee, he's an assemblyman, a progressive Democrat, last week introduced a bill in the California state legislature that would impose an extra annual 1.5% tax on those with a worldwide net worth above $1 billion. <laughs> well, I think you and I pretty much don't have to worry about this. Starting as early as next year. And according to Just the News, that's, that's some website or something. The tax will apply to every resident regardless of whether they are in the state part-time or temporarily. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. The last place on earth It will also allow The state to pursue Wealth taxes From former residents Who built their wealth In California But moved For those who move Out of state And do not plan On returning The wealth tax Will be slowly decreased Over several years Based on the percentage Of days of the year The taxpayer Was present in the state Plus The years of residence Over the Three previous Taxable years The the bill states So what do y'all think about that? Well, there is this thing called the, oh, what is it? The reparations bill that they want to pass in San Francisco. And that's a lot of money going out to a lot of people. They would need something like this. We would need something in California to pay something like that. I don't know if that's the plan. But, hey, we need a lot of infrastructure in this state right now. After those storms. Where all the water rushed out to the sea In my lovely town of Podcastro Valley There is a street called A Street That every day I have to deal with One half of the street still exists The other half fell into a river That wasn't there previously That's why they didn't The the river suddenly appeared And there went the street So that means I can go South East is it Southwest on that street But I can't go northeast And that causes me a lot of problems In my daily commute But That's what we're gonna Tax those Billionaires It makes them Hey we got a lot of billionaires In this state That's for sure Speaker McCarthy From California Officially rejected The top Democrats Committee assignments This has been A big news story Lately I'm Not really a, uh, I don't really like. I don't feel any outrage either way with this. But Fox News says Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy rejected the Democrat leader Hakeem Jeffries' demand to reappoint our own little representative here in Podcaster Valley, Eric Swalwell, and Adam Schiff, both Democrats from California, to the Committee on the Intelligence on. Committee on Intelligence, not the Intelligence. It's the Intelligence from Doctor Who. And 
the te- intelligence was voiced by Ian McKellen, and I forget the other guy's name, who then was the intelligence in a couple other episodes. That's that's neither here nor there or anywhere. Where are we? Where do we go? We were talking about intelligence. Not that that pertains to this podcast, but anyway, cafe anyway. This was yesterday. Jeffrey said in a letter to McCarthy last Friday that Schiff and Swalwell were imminently qualified legislatures, le- legislators with more than two decades of providing oversight for the nation's intelligence community. And then Kevin McCarthy said, according to Fox News, or, or according to Twitter, he said on Twitter, I have rejected the appointment of Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell for the House Intelligence Committee. I am committed to returning the House Intel Committee to one of genuine honesty and credibility that regains the trust of the American people. Well, Nancy Pelosi pulled a similar move a couple years back. So I don't know what to say. Both sides do it. Yes, that's the thing to say. And I knew I knew a really liberal podcaster who used to just bash that both sides do it thing. And say, no, 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 just Republicans do it. Well, j- yeah, just Republicans do some things. Just Democrats do other things. But in a lot of ways, they're all the same animal. They're all politicians and both sides do do it. And there is also, speaking of one politician, Biden is looking to reverse the course and consider sending Ukraine Abrams tanks, according to the Associated Press. In what would be a reversal, the Biden administration is poised to approve sending M1 Abrams tanks to the Ukraine. U.S. officials said yesterday as international reluctance to send tanks to the battlefront against the Russians begins to erode. The decision could be announced as soon as today. I don't know if that was announced or not. It could take months or years, though, for the tanks to be delivered. Irene, Irat is, Irat, Irene? How about Iran is irate with new Western sanctions and they have promised retaliation. This according to Reuters, Iran yesterday strongly condemned new sanctions imposed by the European Union and Britain and said it would retaliate after the West stepped up pressure on Iran over its crackdown on protests. The European Union imposed sanctions on more than 30 Iranian officials and organizations, including units of the powerful Revolutionary Guards, blaming them for a brutal crackdown on unrest and other human rights abuses. This is the ninth round of U.S. sanctions put into effect because of the regime's oppression of protesters. The clerics have survived decades of Western sanctions, according to Hot Air. Walmart has increased its hourly age to $14. It continues to fight to attract staff in a tight labor market for frontline workers. All these people being let go from the tech industry. There's your job. Walmart's U.S. workers in stores and warehouses will earn a starting wage of at least $14 an hour starting next month. Up from 12 bucks, the country's largest private employer said in a memo to staff. Rivals including Amazon and Target have a $15 an hour minimum wage, while Costco Wholesale, their minimum is even higher, according to the Wall Street Journal. So get a job at Walmart and move out of California because you won't be able to survive on that in California. And you heard about Pence's lawyers finding classified documents in the former VP's home. So that just makes everybody shut up. Because what are you going to do? Oh, look at Biden. He had documents. Look who's Mr. High Road now. Look at that. Well, the stuff he said about Trump. And then, oh, look at Pence's got documents. Look at what... Everybody said the, about the things that they said and everything going back and forth. It can, both sides do it, I guess. Google is being sued by the Department of Justice. They sued Alphabet's Google 
yesterday accusing the company of abusing its dominance of the digital advertising business and said that Google should be forced to sell its ad manager suite in the government's latest jab at thwarting big tech's market power, according to Reuters. The lawsuit tackles a business... Uh, the, the lawsuit tackles a business at Google that is responsible for 80% of its revenue. The Justice Department asked the court to compel Google to break up its ad technology business. And the Wall Street Journal said last year, Google offered to split parts off of its ad tech business into a separate company under the alphabet umbrella to fend off the most recent Justice Department investigations. But the Justice Department, the DOJ, rejected the offer and decided to pursue the lawsuit instead. And this is one last interesting piece of info I'd like to share with you outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Food for thought. Reuters is saying that the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida pledged on Monday to take urgent steps to tackle the country's declining birth rate, saying it, it was now or never for one of the world's oldest societies. Japan has in recent years been trying to encourage its people to have more children with promises of cash bonuses and better benefits, but it remains one of the most expensive places in the world to raise a child. The BBC says that the Japanese Prime Minister said that he eventually wants the government to double its spending on child-related programs. A new government agency to focus on the issue would be set up in April, he added. Falling birth rates are driven by a range of factors, including rising living costs, more women in education and work, as well as greater access to contraception, leading to women's choosing to have fewer children. Last week, China reported its first drop in population uh, in 60 years. So that's what's happening today. But let's go back to yesterday. Let's go back in time. All right, I'm going to now bring you this part of the podcast. Let's go back with Matthews, going back to 20, 2002, 2002, as we now say. We say 20 a lot now instead of 2000, because that's how we roll these days. Okay, so here we go. This was when I was on a radio station in the Ventura County area entitled Kehe. A country station. I was there for 11 years. And I would do this nightly show where I'd have some interesting calls. A lot of interesting calls. And it was, a, it was a... I don't think you could do this kind of show today. I, I don't think people... I don't think radio stations would allow it. They're just... Ah, that you, you've given too much creativity to this guy. Um, he's... Uh, he, he's... Going to be You know they just want you to shut up and play the music Basically They don't care about they don't want that That kind of creative th- thought going create Creative Expression going on People that really Use the borders And the bounds And the tools that are there For you in the world In the concept in the construct Of radio So here is a little piece from around May of 2002. And let's listen now, shall we? I think this should work. Let's see. <laughs> the cafe is heard only on... K-H-A-Y. 100.7 K-H-A-Y with K-H-A's Matt Michael. What I'm curious about is why every Allison Krauss video has her in slow motion. It's to give the... Um, the fact that she's uh, a ghost. <laughs> she's <laughs> and sexy. And here's another thing. You know, X Files is about to end, and all this stuff, right? Thank goodness. <laughs> I didn't know you didn't like that show. No, no, I like it. I just think that all shows should, uh, you know, come to a timely end. Yeah. Well, Law and Order will never end, but. 
that show's been on forever. But but remember, you know, whenever we say something's weird, we often accent it with the Twilight Zone theme. Do, 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 do. But I've never heard someone accent it with the X Files theme. Do, 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 do. Because there's really, how do you hum that song? Do, 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 do. Yeah. Can you do Six Feet Under, the theme song of that? Oh, hang on. Hang on a sec. <laughs> Ask me what I'm watching on TV. <laughs> that is amazing. Emerson Drive, I should be sleeping. Mindy McCready before that. Hey, we're going to get to Alabama. Alan Jackson, Brooks and Dunn, the K. Hey, Santa Fe Cafe is next tonight. It's Cinco de Mayo on Trace. De Mayo night. Wednesday, May 22nd, country's biggest night happens at the Universal Amphitheater. The Academy of Country Music Awards, hosted by Reba and starring virtually every major star in country music. There are still tickets available to you, you to attend the ACM Awards, or, and you can purchase them right now from the Academy of Country Music. Silver Circle tickets Tickets, which include dinner, are $250. And for the first time in the history of the awards... Well, I wish I was giving that away on my podcast, but no. That's what it was. That's what we were giving away at the time. Apparently, this was May 3rd, 2002, not 2002. Let's face Odyssey. Oh, I don't... Is this ever going to end, Mike? Yeah. As we walk out to the map bus, Felix the bus driver picking us up. Too, Matt. The K. Hey Santa Fe Cafe, Felix. Let's go! When I tell you this bus needs to go into the shop. Craig and Auto Park. Hey, hey. Hey! Oh, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Santa Fe Cafe. Yes. On 100.7 KHAY Ventura. Thank you, Joe. 650 KHAY, the cafe line. And we are going to hear from Andy Griggs, Toby Keith, Tim McGraw, Hal Ketchum coming up to the new one from Martina McBride on the way. It is Cinco de Mayo on Trace de Mayo. And we're going to go through the lobby here. People waiting to be seated. Let's sit over here at my table next to the stage. And let's get this party started with some Alan Jackson. Oh, Alabama. It is Alabama. This is the KK Santa Fe Cafe, the radio request roundup worth staying up for. And it's Cinco de Mayo on Trace de Mayo. You and I are being visited by John Deere, the engineer, who will tell us if we have any technical emergencies here at the KK Santa Fe Cafe. Yes, we have to have some people stop turning on the electricity tonight. Okay. Matt, there's too many light bulbs up, and it's going to cause a shortage. No, it's not. Look, this is completely... Well, you might be right. Um, Martina McBride's new one called Where Would You Be? Aw, she was big then. That she had so many big songs on the country radio back then. Wow. John Deere the engineer. I don't think he's on today's show. I think he w- was he on yesterday's? No, the day before. Oh yeah, what well, yeah, yesterday he was on. Okay. So in that we mentioned Law and Order a little bit previous about how it's never gonna end. And I was right in twenty oh two saying that it will never end. I mean, it still exists with Christopher Maloney and Mariska Hargitay. Which, uh, what is this bit of news that has to do with that? Christopher Maloney has addressed the, which he looks very good bald, doesn't he? Shaved head. What a, what a, that guy's got a beautiful cabeza. Uh, Mariska, oh, and happy Cinco de Mayo. Or that was Trace de Mayo. And if you open up a, a jar of, of uh, mayonnaise and let it sit and go bad, that's Stinko de Mayo. Or Mayo. Okay, so he recently addressed the Mariska Hart. I had to throw one dad joke in here. Even though I'm not a dad. I'm a cat dad. Where is Rocky anyway? Outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. The last place on earth. So he's addressed the Mariska Hargitay kiss. Uh, and this story was from today, actually. 
A uh, promo for the NBC dramas, January 26th episode, Tuesday, potential kiss between longtime will they, won't they couple. And though he couldn't confirm or deny what goes down during the episode, he did share his thoughts on whether he thinks Benzler, because char- his character, uh, oh, her character's last name is Benson, his last character is Stabler, so Benzler, if they'll end up together. I think there's a world, he said. I think there's a world? I used to not, but I think we're all trying to figure out what the exact steps are and what the end game is. And a kiss kiss could be the exact thing that sets Benson and Stabler down the path to romance. The episode will see Stabler stop by SVU after Benson calls in a favor. As for what that favor is, Maloney said just to pick up her son. But based on the previous steamy moment, uh, it could be something else. Okay, anyway, Cafe Anyway, I don't watch the show, so I, I can't tell you. But I would like to say one thing, though, in the world of television versus movies. Have you noticed, if you ever try and watch a movie on your TV, how the sound can be weird? And how you have to watch with subtitles. Something, some crazy amount of people watch with subtitles. Even if they don't technically have to. If they're not hard of hearing or have no hearing. They still watch programs, watch movies with subtitles. I have to often because, well partly because one of my ears has been plugged up since I got covid a month ago now. Yes, it was around Christmas. It was a very COVID Christmas. But the thing is when you are watching these movies and a lot of TV shows today, the actors are really going for this naturalistic delivery. And Vox, the channel, the website, and actually Vox used to be a platform where you could put podcasts on and I used to have the little website, mikesdailypodcast.vox.com. But then Vox, that company sold to the media company Vox and they have the Vox website. But they had a very interesting video, you can watch it on YouTube, about how movies are mic'd, how they microphone and, and get the audio with the dialogue between the actors. Once upon a time, and if you watch, they use that scene from Singing in the Rain where they're going from silent movies to talkies and how the microphone is in this plant and the lady, the actress, can't remember to talk into the plant because that's where the microphone is. So she turns away and every time she turns away, she goes silent. Well, that's what that was a real problem in Hollywood for decades where the microphones, they just couldn't get them close enough to people. So actors learned to play to that and they would point their mouth and talk to the microphone wherever it was and they knew how to project to get their voice heard and so people would see you know it play back later and go oh that sounds great and when people would have to go back and overdub let's say it couldn't be heard because of whatever reason maybe the wind was too strong and they couldn't get the microphones out there that costs a lot of money that movie studios don't want to pay. So to avoid that whole issue, a lot of times they just go with what they get. And they, a lot of directors nowadays are like, ah, oh, the audience will figure it out. There's also this thing called dynamic range, which this podcast does not have. <laughs> it's just all one level pretty much. But in movies, they want the, the, the loud bangs or the booms or the crescendo of the music if you're watching a musical like in canto to swell and to be big and to hit you in the face sonically and they can't do that if all the sound is one level so they bring the dialogue the voice the voices of the people talking down low so you you crank it up and then all of a sudden the music gets really loud and you're like what the heck or house blows up or something or a car crashes and it what the, it just it's so loud it breaks your speakers and then the final issue 
is they mix down these movies to something called Dolby Atmos, which is several cha- several hundreds, over a hundred channels, which movie theaters that are equipped with that, they'll use because they got speakers all around the room. And these movies mix down to those channels. And so for those people that are to- total movie files, they want that total immersive sonic experience. They want every one of those speakers to be on. Uh, so that's why you're paying crazy movie prices that and the movie industry is greedy as heck. But when they mix all that audio down to, let's just say you watching it on Netflix, they mix it down to a stereo play. I believe that unless they go a little bit higher, there's like a 7.5 that gives you seven speakers worth of sound. But a lot of us just use the stereo, the two speakers, the left and the right, which is like your FM radios left and right. Or they mix it down to mono. I don't think they do that, though. But you can have a mono play where it's just all mixed together coming out of one speaker. That's pretty much when you're listening on your phone. If, you're ju- if you just are using the phone speaker, it can give you some stereo. But that all of that mixing down, though, you compromise sound. You compromise it all. And there are young, young people that are inexperienced at this that just got out of college that don't really know. There's a lot of finesse that needs to happen with this mixing process that I don't think the young generation gets, but they're the ones that are getting employed because they're not getting, I don't know how well they're getting paid for this, but it's a huge job. Maybe a computer someday will do it really, really well. And maybe that's what they're using and the computers aren't doing it really well. But there is apparently in your TV a way to accent what the dialogue is. There are some TVs with settings that go for specific audio dialogue enhancement. So check your TV to see if that is there. And that's pretty much it. Law and Order continues. I am happy that you listened to the podcast. I hope you got a lot of stuff out of it. I know that these people here outside of Cafe Anyway did. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How ya doing? It's a disgruntled fiddle player, Mark. I didn't understand anything you said about that audio stuff. Tell you what. What? You know, I think a lot of the actors today, the young actors, they just mumble and do that. What? They mumble. They're, they're mumbling like you're mumbling? I'm not mumbling. I'm being perfectly clear, Mark Matthews. Okay. Well, I'm sure we understood what you just said. Look who else is here. Hello, Mark. I make the delicious root beer. Have some right now. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yes. Well, that was some really good root beer. Thanks, drink around now. I'll cut you. Thank you. You know, if I would have had that same root beer that you just gave me in Rockridge, it probably would have cost 20 bucks. Because they're a bit uh, uh, at the high with the prices there. Yeah, that's how much it costs here, too. Give me $20. You can use your damn it if it's easier. Don't worry, I will cross my eyes so I can't see your secret code. I really thought it was free. Especially since I help run this place. I thought I got a little... Nope. No benefits for Mike. No little frills. Hey, what a fun show this has been. It's been full of frills, and thank you for listening. Next show, it'll be the wonderful Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, and Bison Bentley. Let's do a podcast! (laughs) Mike's TV Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikestvpodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikestvpodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye!